Welcome to the webinar. Um, I appreciate everybody taking the time to join in today. Uh, we're, we're joined today with a couple presenters from uh, uh, both Accenture and the criticism side. Um, let me just give you a quick roadmap of how we're going to spend the time and then we're going to dive into the content. So first of all, uh, we're going to have uh, Andrew Hopkins, the Director of North America Mobility Consulting, talk about trends affecting um, business today. So Andrew, maybe um, before I continue with the agenda, could you give the folks on the line just a brief um, synopsis of your background? Sure. So my role at uh, – good, good morning, everybody. We'll start there. Um, so at Accenture, I'm part of our mobility practice, which is part of our sort of broader digital practice that I'll talk about in a moment. And I run the management consulting uh, piece of that, of that business, and really my job, quite honestly, is to help clients figure out how to make money out of mobile and how to maximize their return on, on mobile investments. Back to you. Back to you. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Accenture has uh, a wide range of experience, obviously, both with the mobility practice and a number of independent research angles and, and innovation labs that they're involved with. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, after Andrew talks, we're going to spend just a couple moments with uh, Rob Kwok, who is the co-founder and CTO of Criticism. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, Rob is going to spend a, a few moments um, dovetailing into what Andrew talked about, how, you know, from where the trends are affecting your business um, and looking at how can you actually pinpoint and identify what are the mobile issues that uh, are moving the levers most for your, your, your mobile business and then what are the techniques you can use to optimize um, apps to drive business results around that. And we'll close out with some Q&A. So, uh, to give you just a very quick thumbnail sketch of criticism, for those of you who might not have heard, Rob, if you could move forward a slide. Criticism is the leading mobile application performance management company, and we help um, companies gather data that helps them optimize their mobile business. It's, it's uh, a solution set that helps IT, product managers, and development um, gather granular information in a, a real-time platform that enables them to optimize their apps to run them better, faster, uh, and, and, and uh, optimize the business associated with those apps. So just to give you some sense of scale here, our, our system pro processes um, about 50 billion launches a month in over 120 countries, and, and we monitor traffic from about uh, a billion monthly active users. So criticism um, is, is very honored today to have with us uh, our Accenture um, friends. So Andrew will be uh, transitioning to your section now to talk about some of the trends affecting enterprises and businesses today. Thanks, Josh. Um, so let me start off by, and I'll talk a little bit about what digital is to Accenture, what, what we view within the bounds of digital and its importance. And then I'll narrow it down a little bit and bring it back to how mobile applications fit within that digital ecosystem and their importance um, in, in delivering the end value. So let me start, Rob, if you want to move forward. Um, Rob, oh, thank you. So digital, what is it? And if you Google digital, you'll find any number of different things that are um, included in the definition of digital, and obviously things like mobile and apps and all the rest of it. Um, so, if you hit the next slide, Rob, let me simplify this just a little bit. And uh, when we're talking digital, it's really the congruence of, of a number of very, very important digital and technology trends that are coming together at the same time to fundamentally change the way that we live and ultimately the way that enterprises do business and, frankly, governments will govern as well. And so, the, you know, broadly speaking, if you look at these six sort of boxes here, what you have is, and I'm a mobile guy, so let's start there. The whole idea of connected everything and mobile means that you have the ability to engage with people, things um, at all times, and in a manner that is convenient to people being interacted with. So there's this, this idea of continuous engagement. And this continuous engagement can derive huge amounts of data, and which is supported by this, uh, these ideas of you know, cloud, cloud computing, um, data velocity, and analytics. Um, 
and the ability to take that data that you're capturing from all these interactions and actually turn that data into really usable information and ultimately into action is what drives uh, the change that, that we're talking about. And the final one, if you just think about it from a consumer standpoint, um, the ability to drive adoption and information at scale is, is a fundamental piece of all this. So putting this all together, and we just see incredibly dramatic changes, and when we talk to our clients about this stuff, the basic message is if you're not thinking about this, you're behind because everybody else is thinking about it. So next slide, please, Rob. So I'm not going to dive into this. It's pretty obvious, and all of you know this. Um, digital is, is absolutely massive. I mean, these, probably, these, these numbers are probably out of date. In fact, I'm sure they are because they are uh, a couple of months old. But just the scale of what's happening on you know, Facebook and PayPal and so forth is just phenomenal. And it's going to get bigger if you hit the next one, Rob. Um, I spend a lot of time with clients on Internet of Things. And what is, what's coming with the Internet of Things is, is absolutely phenomenal. And so and just the, the sheer numbers of, of sensors, devices, um, you know, the network component of this, APIs and so on, the number of apps is going to be astonishing. And the complexity of some of these ecosystems is, 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 quite, is quite interesting as well. Um, but again, this is not the time to dive into it, but I will dive into the next one, Rob. When we talk to, talk to our clients when I talk about this, the number that is really most interesting to me is this, this idea of economic impact. I mean, at Accenture, obviously, we're interested in what people can pay for our services, but ultimately, when you look at digital, the economic impact, and this is from a, from a Cisco white paper, but there are very similar, many very similar studies that talk about the impact of digital. And you look across to the right, things like customer experience, you know, $3.7 trillion impact through how digital will impact the customer experience, asset utilization, employee productivity, supply chain, and so forth. It's, it's an incredible sort of change that's coming. And ultimately, when, when we're trying to figure out how to help our clients with this. This is the number that we focus on. It really is, you know, my goal is to figure out how every enterprise that we interact with gets their share of the benefit from digital and specifically mobility as, as they move forward. Rob, next slide, please. And obviously, digital transforms industries. Um, and these are all things that I'm sure all of you know and have seen and have experienced. And one that's not on here, another favorite example is just how Nike has, an, has reinvented itself from a product company with a, you know, once every six months or a year I buy a pair of shoes to a continuous engagement through an ecosystem of data and social and information that has just transformed that whole Nike relationship into something that is completely ongoing um, and highly social and highly valuable to the people that are engaged in it. And all of that is obviously facilitated by these digital technologies. And, you know, we could spend hours with, on examples of just how things are changing. Um, and, <clears throat> uh, you know, like I said right up front, if you're not thinking about it in, your t in the context of your, of your industry or your market or your client, somebody else is doing it for you. Uh, next one, please, Rob. So let's dive a little bit into a couple of trends that lead us into the app. So, you know, when you talk about Internet of Things, just the number of different devices or the types of device that are going to be construed as mobile is just going to explode. And this is none of this really on here has got anything to do with the enterprise and things that are going on in factories and oil fields and so on and so forth. But just the number of things, and somewhere in here I think there's a scale which tells me how fat I am and how out of shape I am, which I don't really want to know, but that's where all this is, all this is going. And if you hit the next one, And all these new, these connected devices and connected interactions drive all this data that I talked about earlier and the ability to, to, to use this data to, to drive new services, new business models, um, more efficiency, better customer engagement, um, better asset utilization. It's all driven off this data and how we can use it and analyze it from, from these mobile interactions. Uh, next one, please, Rob. I apologize for the delay. 
between between slides. Rob and I haven't quite got this synced. But so, let, so let's switch gears a little bit. So all of this data and all this, this mobile stuff is all well and good. But ultimately, what it comes down to and what I want to focus on is the interaction that all of this stuff has with the end user, and that is through an application. And we'll talk about some of the examples on this, but if you do, if you do all these things and you wire all this stuff up and you do all this analysis and you produce it in a way that is completely foreign or not in a way that is conducive to a user making, taking value from it, then you lose that. And the way that you know the way that enterprises and everybody is doing this is through is through the application. That's what I want to focus on for a little bit. So if you hit the next one, Rob, please. So Apple, you know, said is there's an app for that. So there's going to be an app for everything. And these are just some of the examples of the interfaces that are being are being done through applications of some of these connected devices. Next one, Rob, please. And obviously, therefore, you know, the number of apps is 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 dramatically growing. The number of app users is dramatically growing. Um, the average time, which well, this one absolutely floored me, the bottom left, the number of time spent per user on mobile apps is just a phenomenal, uh, to me, am amount of time. But I, when, I, when I stepped back and thought about it, it's probably about right, and I guess I probably fit, in, fit somewhere in this, if not higher. Um, the number of apps installed by user is going up and will continue to rise. So the importance of applications in this, this digital ecosystem is, is, is rapidly expanding. Rob, next one, please. Conversely, though, the, the competition for time is dramatically increasing. And so as you, the, the more apps that a user has, the more time the more time they spend on each of those apps. So on the good side, applications are becoming more important, more common. On the bad side, every app you put out there is has more com has more competition. And this is obviously tailored to consumer. It's a slightly different perspective in the enterprise. Um, but again, we'll talk about that in a moment. The next one, please, Rob. And you know, more stats on this. One app out of five abandoned after first use. Um, I've done that more than, probably more than that, but that's another, another, just another indicator of if you get your app wrong and that app experience wrong, you lose them. And quite often the thing on this one is that people will try the app and the experience goes wrong, then they don't try it again. Um, even if the app is useful, if the experience is bad, you lose them. Uh, next one, just another data point I think on, on app usage. Um, yeah, just to add to that point that you had, um, you know, we've seen the same thing in our data where users are just very unforgiving in mobile. And, you know, one, one great example of that is a, a report that we released last week that talked about, you know, iOS 8 and how iOS 8 had, you know, 60% higher performance issues than iOS 7 when that was launched. And, you know, there's a huge backlash in there. And I think a lot of that's caused because, you know, users so, are so unforgiving in mobile. If you use an app and it and it and it crashes or it doesn't operate properly, um, they just you know quickly abandon that app. Yeah, you're right, Robin. Let me just pile on to that. There's an example. Just actually, quite recently, we were having a conversation with a client, and they were debating whether they wanted to stay mobile web or have a mobile app. And their the data point was is that our mobile app usage is terrible. People don't use it. And so. When we actually looked into the application, it became very obvious as to why that was the case, because the app just fundamentally was awful. And at various points in that application, you would just drop off, or it would, it would, it would freeze up. So it became a very self-fulfilling prophecy that they said, well, the app doesn't get the traction we want, and we don't get the value out of it. Well, your app sucks. So if you don't fix it, then obviously you're not going to get that traction. But ultimately, of course, you know, and you, we could debate at great length this whole mobile web versus mobile app thing, and I don't, I don't want to. Um, all I will say is that from, a, from an enterprise standpoint, if I'm dealing with a consumer, I really want you to have my app because it allows such such a increased level of engagement and interaction with you. And owning a piece of your of your screen with my application is something that I strive for. And so, you know, the, the, the importance of the application. Not just in consumer, but obviously to consumer is is, is fundamental. Um, so you know, switching gears a little bit on just 
the revenue associated or the, the value associated to apps, and this is just one view, and it's, a, it's the sort of view, revenue to a developer. And if you're a developer building consumer apps, then you know here's just some stats about how important getting this right really is to you. Um, if you hit the next one, um, you know again talking about money, the the, the investment of companies and applications is 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 growing dramatically. I mean, we in Accenture, we've within our digital mobility practice, we've sort of got a couple of key towers, and one of those towers is applications because the demand for apps is just is, is expanding so rapidly. So the investment being made by the enterprise in applications, be they consumer, be they field force, or be they applications for, you know, for anybody or anything in your ecosystem, that amount of money being spent really requires some rigor and discipline around what are you building, why are you building it, and, and is it working? And, you know, the investment that's made is, is if you're not, if you're not, when you're building an application, no matter what it is, if you don't have a pretty good idea as to the value it's going to deliver, and you should probably take a step back and think, why am I building this thing? And that's, that is also another common thing that we see in, in the, the building of apps or just in digital in general with our clients, but specific to applications, apps are built. And there's no sort of upfront, well, what are we trying to do? What's the goal? What's the objective? Why are we doing it? And how will we know if we're successful? And without that discipline and without that measurement, you're really throwing good money after bad if you're just throwing apps out there and they don't take off. So there's, a, there's this, this idea of the digital is, is all about innovation and trying things out, which is very true, but it needs to be within the, within the constraint of ultimately, what am I trying to achieve? So uh, next one, please, Rob. So what does this all mean, this, 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 this plethora of applications and the value of applications? And let me hit the, hit the final slide that I have here, Rob, please. So fundamentally, to, to sort of backdrop and sum it, sum it up, you've got this incredible you know, convergence of, of, of technologies. You've got, the, you know, you've got mobile, you've got data, you've got analytics, and all these opportunities that give you so many ideas and ways to add value, to add, to add um, you know, functionality and, and to, to anybody and everybody in your ecosystem. And the way that is often delivered, or most often delivered, is through an application. But if that application doesn't deliver a user experience that is compelling, simple, attractive, and delivers value, then you've lost all that digital value, a considerable amount of it anyway. And I want to give you three examples of why this is so, this is so important. Um, I mean, the obvious one that we all know is that the importance of, if I have a, a, a mobile commerce app, and if I think about that, there's a very obvious advantage with how much do I sell or, or how much do I sell either on that application or how much increased in-store revenue am I driving through that, through that application. And if you think about the sort of steps within, within that app, you know, you've got find, research, buy, check out, follow up, whatever those are, there's, a, there's, a, there's an ability to, to, to figure out your end value, what, what, what should that app be giving me, what's my target? And then within that, you've got all these different transactions that you can analyze and manage. So you can look at and say, well, where are things falling over? What's the value of that particular, that particular step? Um, and it's crucially important that when you're thinking about this stuff, you, you look at it in that way. What's the value and what's the value of the steps and the things that I'm doing within that application? Another example is enterprise sales. And this is, this is one that I find interesting because the idea Today, when we go talk to, to clients about mobile, sort of mobile enablement of salespeople, it's very often, all right, let's throw Salesforce onto a, onto a tablet. And you know, now, we can, now we can get much better information about what people are doing, and we can manage it more effectively. And the opportunity is lost. Because the opportunity through a sales app on mobile is to really take a look at how your rep sells, how, they, how their customers buy, and to tailor the experience and all the resources, the data, the information, the tools that you that you make and make available on that on that mobile mobile device, in a way that is tailored and specific to the process. So, if you think about a very simple example, if I'm a sales rep and I'm preparing for a meeting, uh, I'm sitting in the car park before I walk in, then giving me the latest information in a way that is just a pops it up based on my calendar and says, here's who you're meeting with, here's the latest sort of pronouncements on LinkedIn, here's the latest information of the company, here's what we've done, incredibly valuable. So I walk in totally informed. 
within that meeting, I can use my, my tablet to show information, to do various different things, to follow sort of scripted sales calls if that's an appropriate thing to do. I can do live configuration, and ultimately I can close it within, within that call, and then obviously after the call there's all the follow-up. But tailoring that experience in a way that is totally focused on driving more revenue means that you've got a, a very measurable revenue improvement that you're striving for. And again, so when you look at it that, in that way, you can break it all those pieces down and say, so where's the value and where's the breaking down and why are people coming, you know, not using this piece of it? And the ability to really understand how people are using those applications and where they're going wrong means that you can continually improve the applications and their effect and their, and their economic value. And the third one, then, just to wrap it up, is going back to my favorite hobby of IoT, is the guy that's in the field, so I'm, I'm an oil field worker, and my application on my, on my iPad um, gives me four pieces of information at the right time. So what's about to break, based upon what's being monitored, monitored and, how, and the readings of, of the device? Uh, what has broken? Um, what do I need to fix it? And how do I get that stuff? And then ultimately, how do I fix it more quickly? Again, there's economic value associated with the end result, but also with all of those steps that allows you to take a look at, you know, just, just how do these things drive the value that I'm looking for. So those examples are all, what I'm trying to, do, trying to, trying to look at is, is every application that you're doing as an enterprise has an economic value to it. And it doesn't really matter what it is, but if you, if you can understand that value and how the application supports it, then you're on the right track. And this is where it becomes so important for us to work with, with, with criticism, because criticism allows you to really understand and analyze that. And so th that's why we have the relationship that we do with criticism and why they're so important to us in the, the overall digital ecosystem. And with that, let me hand it off to Rob, and, and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, <clears throat> that, was, that was great. Uh, I think you really hit the nail on the head. Uh, what was especially amazing to me is that, you know, with $234 billion spent on mobile, uh, you still have apps that have, you know, such a high abandonment rate. And, you know, one of the points you were talking about is, you know, as these apps have really started driving, you know, real value, real revenue, um, you know, how do I, how do I use, how do I make sure that these apps are so successful that, you know, I've invested all this money into, into creating. And so I wanted to dive deeper on, you know, a couple of examples that, you know, you talked about at the end you know, really focuses on, you know, what we call a mobile transaction and being able to monitor the, those transactions and applications. Um, you know, you gave some great examples of a couple of these mobile transactions. Um, you know, talking to some of our customers, you know, we found the same thing. It really, you know, as regardless of industry, regardless of the audience, you know, for B2C and B2E apps, Every single one of these apps um, and these companies, these customers that we've talked to has, you know, these five to ten kind of critical transactions in their app that are just key to their, the core value of their application. So it's anything from, you know, making a, a stock trade in a brokerage app to um, uh, sending, you know, syncing data in a fitness app to scanning a barco a barcode in a field force enablement app, you know, talking to our customers, you know, all of these transactions are important, and even cutting across every single industry, we found that there's you know very specific transactions that are important. So things like account creation, login, and by far the most important one, which was surprising and, and as well as interesting to me, is you know how long it takes for an app uh, to load is one of these transactions that every single customer that I've talked to you know tracks. Um, you know, from a Fortune 500 company to a brokerage app to, you know, Snapchat or Groupon or one of these new uh, Internet companies, this is by far, you know, one of those transactions that they all track. And that's because, you know, all these transactions really have an impact to the bottom line. And what happens if these transactions fail? Um, you know, <clears throat> these are, you know, key parts of a transaction. These are key parts to the value of an app. If you have, uh, if you're, you know, if you've used the stock trading app and that stock purchase failed, um, that's, uh, you know, a huge loss in terms of the company. It's a, a huge loss in terms of the user experience. 
And if it's, you know, an even more critical application, such as, you know, a medical application uh, where you're looking at the patient record and that transaction is never completed, the, the app crashes or it returns bad data, um, those are transactions that have, you know, a huge impact to not only, uh, you know, the revenue and the reputation of the company, but also, you know, real value, real economic value to those companies. And so why do these, why do these failures, why are these so important to companies and why, why do they happen so much? You know, we, we talked about this briefly earlier, but there's been this, you know, huge explosion in complexity, not only, you know, to the degree of the number of devices and different form factors of devices that are occurring in apps, but if you look at the number of, you know, operating systems that are out, you know, iOS 8 was just launched, had a huge uh, impact to, um, you know, people weren't able to make calls because of an update to their application, to their operating system. Um, that's, you know, a huge creep in the pro into the productivity of all these users. But you also have all these dependencies on cloud services in an application. You know, talking to our customers, you know, applications on average use about six to seven, you know, different cloud services. Um, this could be anything from a CDN to an analytics SDK to their own API. Um, and all these apps are, you know, fundamentally dependent on all these cloud services. And anytime these change, they can cause performance, huge performance issues to applications. And the last thing here is really connectivity. Uh, with the explosion of mobile, and the main difference between mobile is that, you know, they, they depend on connectivity so much. Um, and as people are moving around, um, you know, moving around in the in an oil field to, you know, commuting to work, um, there's various network conditions that can cause a lot of these issues. And if you multiply the, the different um, versions of each of these things, you, you come out with, you know, 100 million different ways, basically, an application, a mobile transaction can fail. And, you know, what we do is we allow you to monitor each, uh, each of these mobile metrics. So everything from a cloud service, you can, we can help you monitor API errors or device level errors if you couldn't connect to the internet, to looking at network performance, looking at the latency of network requests, to data transfer rates, to uh, errors that you get back from a server. Um, and, and looking at, you know, all the different form factors of a device, of an operating system, uh, how much memory is being used, how much CPU is being used by an application. And there's, and what other people don't think about is there's so many versions of an application itself that you're using. You know, many times users won't upgrade to the latest version of your apps, or a lot of the times you're caught having to support an older version of the app um, that you didn't expect that you had to support for, you know, <clears throat> the lifetime of that application. And you have to track everything from, you know, crashes that happen to handled exceptions to network data. And, you know, and it also varies a lot by the user. Um, every user has a different type of usage pattern. Um, they're in different locations. They'll use an app differently. And all these factors really affect what we call a mobile transaction. Um, you know, there's what we usually say is there's 100 million ways that a mobile transaction can fail. And being able to monitor these uh, transactions, all these form factors, all these ways uh, a transaction can succeed or fail is really how you measure the success of your of your mobile application. So with that, um, I want to dive into a quick demo of uh, one of the products that uh, has been in beta for the last two months uh, called uh, Transactions. So what you're seeing here is basically a dashboard view of all the transactions in your mobile app. So talking about, you know, some of the examples, you know, Andrew mentioned around, you know, checkout uh, or, you know, scanning a barcode in your mobile application. All of those, uh, you know, we define as important transactions in your mobile app that affect the value of your mobile business. And what you're seeing here is we allow you to tie, you know, directly a revenue number to each of these transactions. So. If, each, if one of these transactions fail in the middle of, you know, for example, if you're checking out an application and that application uh, fails for whatever reason, uh, maybe it crashed, maybe a network request failed, uh, we allow you to, you know, give you a, a huge number in terms of, you know, how, uh, how the performance of that app affected, you know, your bottom line. 
And so in this case, let's walk through an, an example of you know application that just launched in the App Store. They just launched an update to their app, and they wanted to monitor you know what was happening in the last hour of that application. You can see here, you know, looking at uh, one of the, the the graphs here of the top five failed transactions, we can see that the checkout transaction had a huge increase in in the failure rate. It went from you know 10 percent to 40 percent, and <clears throat> maybe that's an issue that they need to look at. Obviously, there's been a huge increase in the revenue risk in your app. So let's go here and scroll down and, and see a breakdown of all the transactions in my mobile application and see what's going on. You know, right now it's sorted by the volume of each of these transactions, but sorting this by revenue risk gives you, at a quick glance, um, an easy way to figure out, you know, which transactions are failing, which of those are driving this huge increase to you know, revenue risk in my application. And if we sort this by revenue risk, uh, we can see that the checkout transaction uh, is the one that may be causing uh, the most issues. So let's go ahead and, and drill into that particular transaction. So you know, drilling into that transaction, we've seen that uh, the success rate of this transaction has really gone down in the last uh, 10 minutes or so. And you know, on average, the transaction hasn't slowed down, so there must be some something that's causing this transaction to fail. And if we look at um, you know, this failure graph, uh, we break it down by the many different ways that a, a transaction can fail. Um, it, could, it could have crashed, it could have aborted because a, a network request failed, or it could have just taken simply a long time and it was a bad user experience, and that was what's causing the failure. Uh, we can tell looking at this graph here on the right, that uh, this transaction was failing due to a crash. And we can tell right away you know, what the impact to that application in terms of revenue was immediately by looking at these revenue metrics. We can see on this graph on the right that you know, there's been a huge spike in the, in the, in the revenue risk of this, of this transaction because of this failure. And we can tell that all of our key metrics here that we're monitoring for this, uh, for this transaction have also gone up. So the average value of the transaction has gone down, the average risk has gone up, as well as the total risk. And so this is something that you know we, we can tell right away is an important issue. And let's go ahead and, and debug that issue by scrolling down and looking at the root cause analysis. So you know looking at this data, we can tell you all the reasons why that transaction failed. So what you're seeing here are all the transactions um, for all the transactions that failed within this checkout um, transaction, what were the specific errors that caused that transaction to fail? And right now we have it sorted by simply looking at all of the crashes that occurred uh, in the context of this transaction. So a user was trying to check out, and you know while they're trying to check out, um, this method was failing. And we can actually drill into that method and show you, you know, the file and line of code that was causing the problem, as, along with you know some of the other diagnostic data that we collect, anything from you know the OS version to the device type to the application version. Um, but you know what's interesting is a lot of the times um, these transactions can fail, and you can look at the stack trace and you don't know what's going on. So. What we have is, you know, the ability to drill into very granular data, uh, looking at all the ways um, each particular user has experienced a failed transaction. So it can really get a sense of what that user experience was like. And so we show here a list of all the users that have experienced a failed transaction. Um, you can also filter this by the ones that have experienced a slow transaction as well and see uh, what their user path was like. And what we can do is sort this uh, list of users by the users that had the most revenue impact to your application. And if you drill into a, a specific user here, you can see you know, the last, uh, all the events of that user leading up to that failure. So in this case, you can see that um, that user was using the application. Uh, they had a change to internet connectivity here. They switched from LTE to a much slower edge connection. Uh, they clicked on the store, they tried to get a list of inventory. That actually took over you know, three seconds here. So that was you know, a bad user experience. That's something we should look at as well. But you know, luckily, they continued on that transaction. They added um, additional items to the shopping cart. They tried to check out. 
And at that point, uh, they, they tried to switch from edge to Wi-Fi. Uh, that internet connectivity didn't work. They ended up losing internet. And then that's when you, you try to send, they tried to send a, a network request to their checkout endpoint in their API, and that's what caused that transaction to fail. And so, you know, within five minutes, you're able to recognize, you know, an issue that occurred, um, you know, due to an update in your application. You're able to assess the revenue impact of that, of that failure. You're able to drill into that particular transaction that was failing and see, you know, which users were experiencing those issues and, you know, see exactly what a user was doing leading up to that issue so that you could fix that problem. So let me jump back to uh, the presentation here. You know, and <clears throat> some great examples of that. Uh, you know, we've had great customers that have been uh, that we've talked to that we've you know, helped them uh, solve a lot of the performance issues. You know, Urban Outfitters is a, a great example of that. They before using our products, um, they had over six percent downtime in their app, and we helped them. You know, uh, get to less than one percent downtime. And, you know, we could see, but more important than that was uh, the impact of making those changes to affect performance. Um, they experienced, you know, a 6x improvement to revenue alone from fixing those issues and, you know, a 7x performance improvement to their, to their application as well. And, you know, what I'm really excited about is talking about our relationship with uh, and our partnership with Accenture. Um, you know, partnering with Accenture's App Factory, you know, gives us something that, uh, can really cover every step of the application lifestyle, uh, everything from, you know, creating the concept of an application to designing that application to deploying it and then monitoring that, uh, the application to see, you know, how, what are some ways I can increase uh, the revenue that my app is generating? What are some performance issues that I can monitor to make sure that the, the ROI that I expected out of my application, uh, those metrics I set up to monitor the success of my application are truly being realized. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Josh and he'll uh, talk about, give a quick summary and then uh, we can jump into some quick Q&A. Okay. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so I appreciate uh, you covering the material. What I wanted to do next was just quickly close out with um, a quick summary, and then what we've been getting a couple questions here, so I'd like to tackle some of those, and then we should be able to get everybody out um, in the, before the top of the hour. So just to close out, uh, I think you heard Andrew discussing, you know, how the mobile trends are really affecting and, and creating, uh, frankly, new business models that are forcing enterprises to rethink um, how they approach engaging with their customers. So uh, Accenture works specifically with enterprises around the world to target and pinpoint this full application lifecycle from the strategy standpoint all the way through to the de design development and maintenance side. And where criticism comes in is we provide a, a, a performance management solution specifically built for mobile apps to help identify and optimize the business impact of those applications. And so together, we're, we're sort of bringing together a uh, melding of minds, if you will, to help you across the entire delivery phase and then with the performance information to optimize across that entire, entire chain. So with that, please feel free to contact us. There's a, both the, the web address for criticism and an Accenture email. Feel free to send us a note if you have any uh, questions or uh, if you'd like to discuss any of this further with us. Um, there were some questions that came through both uh, that look like they're for Andrew and then a, a couple that were for, for Rob. So I'm going to act as the facilitator here. And uh, Andrew, this one's going to be targeted for you first. Um, so how, how do you know companies that you work with measure uh, the success of their mobile strategies? How how are they thinking about this, and how does Accenture guide them to think about success in this manner? So that's, that's a very interesting question, Josh, because it varies dramatically. And let me just break it down into a couple of things. So the interesting word on that is strategy, um, because what we find actually is that there's very often not a, a really coherent strategy, but there are a, a number of different sort of mobility projects or initiatives that are spun up from somebody who has an idea. And so 
you know, at, at that point, you don't really have a, have, a, have a strategy. You have a very sort of disconnected group of things that are happening, and ultimately the values doesn't, doesn't always come through. Um, you know, on the other hand, there are, there are a complete var a variation from we don't measure it to we have a, a highly structured approach for managing our mobile strategy, how it interfaces to the business, uh, which is a very important point. This is this whole digital thing changes the relationship between IT and, and uh, the business dramatically. Um, no longer is business really sort of the customer for IT. The relationship has changed, and as an IT person or an IT team, you have a new responsibility to help the business understand what's coming and what what these technologies mean in terms of, of business opportunity. So that relationship changes, and if that relationship works really well then you typically have a very coherent view of what are we trying to achieve and what does that mean in terms of economic value. And it works all the way back from there to, no, we're doing an app by app and we base it on number of users. Ideally, the more business focused the outcomes that are being measured are, the better off you're gonna be. Josh? Oops, sorry, sorry about that, Andrew. Um, so just a follow-on question, slightly different um, different thread here. Um, so you mentioned this relationship between criticism and Accenture. Um, could you just talk a little bit about what, what, what that is? Um, and I'll target that to you, to you um, Andrew. Yeah, so, I mean, we have a, we're, we're a strategic alliance partner. We formed that relationship this year. We, we, ha we have an investment in criticism and we have a, a seat on the advisory board. And I mean, it just, you know, we provide end-to-end -end digital capabilities, but in that, obviously, there are, we do a lot of applications. I mean, I think we've done applications for well over 150 clients now. And to and us, what you guys bring to the table is just a, a no-brainer um, piece of our, as you put it, our application factory process. Um, because we can we can design and build the best possible apps, uh, but the value of the data that you provide is as a, as in, through your performance monitoring function is just in our view completely invaluable to our clients and should be something that they sh they should they all should have. So that fundamentally is, is 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 the relationship that we have, and it's just a you know as Accenture we look for the best possible solutions to take to our clients, and you know in this in this particular area of performance app management, that's that's why we, we work with you. Perfect. Yeah, just to add on to that, you know, we, we work with so many different clients in the world and they have, tend to have, you know, separate development teams and QA teams and, and strategy teams. I think one of the way one of the reasons why we're so excited to work with Accenture is, you know, having them having that whole process and within one company, you know, really gives us the confidence that you know, we can help them develop the best mobile apps, um, giving them, you know, data for how successful they are, and then, you know, having, working with a very, you know, <clears throat> a, a strategic team that can then take that data and, you know, make better applications from that. And I, I think, Rob, just to add on that, that's a really important point. Um, there's an awful lot of applications out there that have been, you know, designed, developed, and built, and deployed, and then it just stops. And there's no no mechanism to monitor what's actually happening, and that's you know without that you don't know what's going on, and you don't understand why it's going well or what's not going well, and that's the, that's the, the the sort of end piece of, of that end to end process you're describing, which is so crucially important where you know where you guys come in. Yeah. Great, Rob. One, I think this question is probably targeted to you. Um, uh, it's it specifically you, you you mentioned the revenue risk, but then you mentioned some kinds of transactions like sign up that maybe aren't don't naturally seem revenue related. Can you maybe talk a little bit about how how, how this would be used in in different scenarios like that? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and that, that's something that's that's come up uh, with a couple of customers that we talked to. Uh, <clears throat> you're right in that a lot of um, a lot of these transactions um, aren't, you know, traditionally tied to, to revenue, uh, but a lot of the times they are uh, 
they they might not be directly correlated, but they they are correlated with you know user experience, which eventually leads to you know aspects of customer success like user retention, you know, and you know the reason why I mentioned application load time as being a transaction that's you know, tracked across industries, across verticals, no matter what type of application you're building. Is because there's you know a high correlation to user engagement in applications, and what a lot of companies measure um, you know is the lifetime value of a customer, and what they tend to do with transactions like application launch with login like account registration that cut across apps but isn't you know directly tied to revenue is they take you know the performance impact of that uh, mobile transaction and they measure that against lifetime value of that of the customer. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then one one quick one, I think Rob also probably for you here. Um, it's about Kony. Do you, do you know? Do we do we have uh, support for Kony? Uh, we do have uh, a product that's uh, that uh, that does have support for Kony, and we're also working with Kony uh, itself to build uh, an even deeper integration with Kony. Um, and if you're if you're interested in that, you know, you can contact our our sales team or our support team for more, for more information. Perfect. And I guess just to piggyback on that, um, one thing I didn't mention is we do have support for a, a wide slew of mobile application development platforms in addition to Kony. So if you're using uh, Appcelerator, using Xamarin, using Unity, uh, we have support for those on top of our, our you know, support for the native platforms, iOS, Android, Windows Phone, HTML5, et cetera. Okay. And then I think this is one more for you, Rob, and then I have one for you, Andrew, after this, I think. So the, the question was, I, I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit, but I think the question is, can you, know, can you get uh, analytic performance information for off-the-shelf apps versus you know, things that you've created? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, we do, actually. We, we launched a product um, earlier this year called App Wrapping. Uh, which basically is targeted at you know, IT operations teams or companies that use white uh, white labeled apps um, at their company, and this basically allows you to monitor um, these apps um, by basically you know injecting criticism into the application without any code level access. So if you wanted to you know monitor the performance of one of these applications in your in your company, um, you can simply you know, upload the app to to our website. We'll inject criticism in it through app wrapping, and then return you an app that's uh, fully that you can monitor with criticism in it. Perfect. I, I, hopefully, for the person that asked that, uh, if that doesn't answer your question, just hit me up again, and maybe we can try again. So uh, the final uh, question I think I'm going to take here is uh, maybe less product oriented, and and either and maybe Andrew, you could take a crack at this first, and then Rob, you can chime in. Um, the questions around um, what about you know just you know the question is curious what what do you see in terms of clients attempting to break their apps into you know smaller ones uh, I guess you know again paraphrasing here this is around app constellations I think the question is and what what do you see going into the marketplace with clients um, so I'm not sure I fully understand the question unless it's it's trying to it's it's around breaking apps into into you know instead of trying to do an app for for everything breaking into into sort of more more um, uh, apps that are smaller and 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 tighter in terms of what they're trying to do. And to yeah, be honest, I think I, that's, that's not a question. Yeah. So that was not a that was a pretty clumsy rephrase of what I, of the question um, called buying time. You know, I don't know. Uh, there are two schools of thought. I was recently at an Apple presentation where that that is the approach that they advise. Um, on the other hand, you know, if, I think there's a risk that if you do that, then you've got you have to move from app, app to app to app to, to actually complete a transaction or to complete a set of transactions, and there's a, there's a challenge with that. So I don't have a definitive answer um, from what I've seen. It's it's really, you know, think through what the right user experience is. For what you're trying to do, and then make the right decision, um, which is you know a nice consulting way to answer the question. But quite honestly, that's the best advice I've got, and I don't really have anything on trends. Maybe you do, Rob. 
Yeah, I think that's that's the trend that we've been seeing is maybe it's because of you know the recommendation recommendation from you know other companies, but we have seen kind of the split up of you know applications, uh, different separate applications for separate functionality. Uh, we have seen that as a trend. Um, I think typically companies do that so that they can have you know one focused application that focuses on one you know functionality that they can monitor. Um, but I think you're right in that it creates a lot of complexity because now you have these transactions and communication between these applications um, is even more important. And a lot of the times, um, you know, if you're if you can't control what happens uh, from application to application, um, in a in a failure case especially, um, it can cause a bad user experience as well. Um, but you know, this has been the trend we've been seeing. Uh, I think time will tell whether it, it sticks or you know, if companies move back to kind of a, a one app for everything model. Yeah, and I, I just to, to pile on that, I mean, I I think it really comes back to to what you're trying to do. Just so there, there could be a natural sort of split, if you like, between the trans the sort of end to end series of transactions and making a purchase, um, and then a, a a a specific application for user support or or customer support or you know help self help or whatever it might be, and that could be. In certain circumstances, a very natural split, particularly if if there's a level of complexity around user support that means that if you put it all into the same app, it gets too that gets too big. Um, but on the other hand, if you try to split up in a sort of unnatural way a a transaction or a set of transactions that is that all work together towards a single outcome, then you run the risk of of making that user experience more difficult and more complex. And uh, you know so. Typically, we'd, you'd try and keep everything within the, within the constraints of that single application. Mm -hmm. What we have seen is some companies develop a kind of a mobile platform uh, that cuts across all their applications. So they'll use yeah. one SDK that's you know com that has common functionality across these applications, and that that we've seen to also be a trend. Yep, that, that actually that totally makes sense. Great. Well. Um, I think in the interest of time, we'll, uh, we'll begin to wrap this up. So, Andrew, thank you very much for joining today. And, Rob, appreciate, um, appreciate you jumping on today and presenting as well. So, thank you both. Uh, fantastic job. And um, for those in the audience, um, thanks again for signing on today. We will distribute a recording of this and email it out to you. So, thanks um, for, for attending, and you'll, you'll get a copy of this for your own uh, viewing pleasure uh, later. If you have any questions, you see the contact info there, so please uh, send us a note or um, get in touch if you'd like any further information. So with that, uh, we'll send you off to the rest of your day. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh.